Hello everyone, Chris Houston here. This session we're gonna take a look at incentive spirometry. Uh, and in this case, we have a Voldyne incentive spirometer. Uh, very, very simple to use. And this is a, a pretty standard design. They come um, uh, single packaged, disposable, with a mouthpiece and a piece of corrugated tubing. Um, you also have a generally a guide to uh, basic patient's weights and what types of ranges or goals that can be set here. This is a very nice little indicator that will uh, can be set based on the patient's effort and kind of give them a goal to reach with each therapy. These design these are designed really to be to be performed by the the, uh, the patient on their own. Uh, in a lot of hospitals, respiratory will start the therapy, will initiate it and train the patient. And then from there, nursing will encourage the patient to use this every hour that they're awake, especially in critical care when they're coming off a mechanical ventilator. Um, if IS is indicated, uh, then they suggest uh, maybe 10 puffs, 10 of these maneuvers every hour when the patient's awake. Um, they are very effective. It's a very simple breath ex exerciser and really helps to expand um, the, the airways, the lungs, and hopefully prevent any atelectasis. So let's just take a look at the Voldyne um, here and how it's used. We're going to have the patient breathe slow into a maximum capacity. At the same time, one of the things we have to note here is the, the guide on this side of the, the IS. And as you can see, there's a best, better, and good. And we want to keep the cuff, the cup, excuse me, in this clear range, in this range. If you're breathing too quickly, you can raise the piston very easily, but the, the, the cup will be pulled up uh, in such a way that it's not as effective. So when I demonstrate this, I'll try to keep the cup right in the center uh, part here to get to achieve the best kind of treatment. So I have the patient exhale. Inhale. Now at that point, I reached about 2,500. Uh, I marked that marking there. And during the treatment, um, I was able to keep the cup right in that general area here where you really want to encourage the patient not to breathe too fast. So let me demonstrate that again. I'll come around this way. Now, if I breathe really fast, I can pull up the piston a lot easier, but again, I don't get the full effect of the incentive spirometer. Let me, show, let me demonstrate that. That would really be inappropriate. You would not be maximizing the device. So again, going slow, a slow inspiratory pull, nice and consistent, keeping the cup right in that zone, and of course, trying to reach the goal that has been established. Um, so yeah, that's an incentive spirometer, Voldyne. There's several different um, uh, manufacturers and they're all very similar. Um, you can uh, obviously read up on the particular device that may be in your clinical rotation, but uh, the Voldyne is very popular. You're, you're liable to see this device out there. So again, when we relate this to our performance evaluation that's in our lab competency book, let's just kind of go through those steps once again. We're going to verify that the patient is ordered in a centrist spirometer. We're going to scan the chart, make sure uh, the diagnosis, see if there's any uh, problems uh, that might be contraindicated here uh, with this particular therapy. Uh, attain, obtain and assemble the, the, the equipment, get it ready to go. Observe standard precautions, including hand washing, possibly uh, PPE, uh, gloves, etc. Identify the patient, introduce yourself and explain the procedure to the patient. Um, again, nowadays, often you're doing two identifiers. So you're, you may be using a barcode system, name, date of birth, have the patient uh, give you the date of birth back so that you're verifying that you have the correct patient. Um, place the p patient in the, in, the, uh, in the position that will maximize. And generally, again, getting the patient on the side of the bed, uh, feet dangling is an awesome um, position to get the thorax nice and straight, but if not, uh, have the patient uh, will move the bed up into high Fowler's position, um, that would suffice. We want to go ahead and assist the patient with the performance, really coach them through this. This is almost like a pulmonary function test or screen where we're really 
uh, encouraging the patient to take a bigger breath, big, 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 deep, 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 nice and slow so that they keep the cup. And we're really giving them some, um, some goals there and really coaching them through their effort on this. This is really an effort dependent device. Um, if they're trained properly and they really understand its use, you will find patients really, uh, really will go after this and, and uh, utilize it every hour. They know that it'll really help them um, be discharged from the hospital. Um, so again, if they're alert and able to perform an incentive spirometer, really, really great tool uh, for lung expansion. Um, again, the Voldine. And again, once you've done the treatment, um, document in the record that the incentive spirometer was started, how the patient performed, uh, document the, the level possibly that the patient achieved. And we do like to have them do as many as we can. So if I can get the patient to do 10 of these while I'm there and encourage them to do 10 an hour when they're awake, um, I always tell them that they need to sleep. So um, let them sleep. This isn't something we wake up for, but when we're up and we're watching television, uh, during the day or in the evening time, using the, the incentive spirometer is very, very key. It's something the patients can do really actively on their own to improve their condition and, and help themselves get uh, discharged quicker. Incentive spirometry.